For more than a decade, speculation surrounding the future of the Woodbury County Jail has been circulating. Now, more than ever before, county leaders appear ready to proceed with changes, but voters ultimately will decide what happens. Even the least expensive options will require a bond referendum. Tonight, a closer look at why those closest to the problems of an out-of-date jail say now is the time to pay the cost of crime. Master Control 3A only, please. Jailhouse doors in Woodbury County swing open frequently these days. We outgrew it shortly after we moved in in 87. It's Sheriff Dave Drew's responsibility to keep criminals behind bars, but constant overcrowding means some offenders walk out scot-free before completing their sentence. It is kind of uh, bulging at the seams right now. Sometimes the sheriff will still come to primarily our misdemeanor judges and say we're at the maximum and uh, we're recommending that so-and-so be released. And that's somebody that's been previously thought should stay there. Intended for 90 inmates, the jail has twice been expanded and now is home to 234 prisoners on a daily basis. I get all excited when it gets uh, below 215 and three days later it's back to 234 and I'm like... It's just never ending. It's like sticking your finger in the dike and you're wondering when it's going to stop. Sioux City Police Chief Rex Mueller echoes that concern. But sometimes the best tool our officers have is to take someone to jail. Officers should not be worrying about the fact that they, they might not be, be able to accept that person. Uh, this is a, a valuable tool and the jail needs to have room. Overcrowding is just one issue plaguing the facility. Built in 1987 on the site of an old gas station, the county has spent close to a million dollars on benzene remediation. Add in another million spent on electrical, plumbing, and other malfunctions, some interrupting court proceedings. The money pit kind of a, a building, whether it's water pipes breaking above their head, whether it's inmates flooding toilets, uh, as they always say, they hope it's just water coming down. What's not coming down is the cost of repairs on the aging building. It's getting to the point where uh, Band-Aids won't do it anymore. The continual repairs that we're seeing are, uh, are escalating um, annually. Uh, not just the cost, but the, uh, the number of repairs that, that are being required. But weighing heaviest on the mind of Schmitz is a collapse of the jail's HVAC system, already past its life expectancy. What do you do with a couple hundred inmates? Because there's no one else that can take that many. So we're going to have a catastrophic problem on our hands. It's just a matter of time. It's a, it really is a ticking time bomb. And the, the disaster waiting is where are we going to move 100 inmates at a time? It's the reason county supervisors are edging closer toward a bond referendum on the issue. But any significant improvements at the jail or law enforcement center, as it's known, will require public support. Simply replacing the HVAC system would top more than $5 million, add in minor improvements for medical and booking needs, and the tab quickly jumps to more than $22 million. And that doesn't address overcrowding. Add in 55 beds, and the tally is $40 million. A new 400 to 500 bed jail would top out at about $50 million. I think we could fill 300 within 30 days. So that leaves 150 for growth. That could be a possible potential revenue. And Board of Supervisors Chairman Keith Radig agrees. When you look at those options to gain revenue from having capacity of a new jail, it becomes the most financial, financially responsible scenario of building a new jail. When you look at you know, continued repairs to this facility here, you know, you're going to spend 20 to 22 million and you're going to have zero new capacity, zero new revenue, and it's all expenses. Yes, it's a big pill to swallow. However, you're going to be swallowing some type of a pill no matter what it is. The voters are going to decide if, uh, if public safety is a priority, and public safety means keeping our community safe.
Now, when that might happen is still unknown, but back in July, Radig and the rest of the Woodbury County Board of Supervisors approved an architectural contract with the Missouri company that's beginning the planning stages for what would be a new jail facility. Now, what happens, Tim, if that referendum failed to get the 60% approval it needs from the public? That's something that could certainly happen, and right now the county doesn't have a, an answer for that scenario. And what's especially troubling is because of the operational issues inside the jail and how long they've been going on, it's doubtful that the county would be able to declare an emergency, thus getting funding. So they truly are in a hard spot. And as the sheriff said, voters will decide if public safety is indeed important. It's a big topic many people are concerned about. Thanks, Tim.